increasing. Uh, so we're not, we're not very good at teaching handling multiculturalism. And then the problem is that students do use technology, but very much for entertainment outside school. You'll be talking about this then on, and I'm going to talk about it a bit. And then, this is what actually, I was giving a speech for a thousand Finnish elementary and high school teachers and middle school teachers, and this is actually what they said when I was asking the father of them. One thing was maintaining mother tongue. Maybe you have the same thing with, with your country here, because English is very much dominating. Everybody has to know English, and I can't academy is in English, and everything is in English. So also supporting mother tongues in Finland. And then units are becoming bigger and bigger, school units are becoming bigger and bigger. And also our teachers feel that current study plans are too restrictive. And then they are, I guess if you are listening to me, I think maybe you have the same problems. Uh, how much creativity can you tolerate within the school system? Okay, so what we call this is actually this phenomenon is so-called double helix of the teacher. They are trying to maintain the old practices, but simultaneously they have to develop new practices. They need to be more innovative. You just had this discussion about education 2.0. The problem is that you must give up something in order to create something new. And that's a problem in Finland because everybody is saying we don't need to change anything because we have so good results. So it's very difficult to change things and that's our main challenge. What I'm going to tell you is our efforts to change teacher education and then finish schools uh, and why we need to do that. And then have this interesting sense of duty is very high in our teachers. Um, they, are, they have very good morals in working. But the problem is that it becomes a health hazard when the environment becomes more and more complex. Then you have a sense of duty, you try to do everything perfectly, then you become exhausted and stressed. So we are trying to tell them that less is more. This is actually central. I'm a learning researcher, I do research on human learning. So we know that it's better to understand profoundly some basic principles uh, rather than go through endless uh, amounts of irrelevant knowledge. But then people think that they have to do this. Okay, so we've started some big projects now in Finland. There's a so-called MIND program now. This is funded by Academy of Finland. I just tell you this because I think this name is funny. I'm going to talk about this digital natives. So our project is called Mind the Gap between digital natives and educational practices. We see that there's a huge gap. Um, what we have there, we have four professors, health and well-being, me representing educational psychology, brain research and te technology mediated. Uh, education, Professor Hakkarainen is my colleague and friend, and, and we've been writing about this topic a lot. So the idea is to integrate educational, developmental, neuroscience, well-being approaches. Uh, and we are especially interested in these digital ladies, because they have, from the beginning of their life, they've been uh, using this information technology devices and the gap between this digital youth and the educational practices and the minds of previous generations. This means that digital natives, they are seem to be used to use all these tools since they are babies, whereas we are more like digital immigrants and we use computers more like external tools. But these young people, they have been integrated with this system since they were born. This is Professor Hakkarainen's daughter 10 years ago. She was already multitasking in her room. But you can see that already 10 years ago, all her equipment is now passionate, old fashioned. So, the problem with this digital ladies' practices and current practices in the working life, you can see that they are very different because this may be self evident, but we don't think about this so much when we are. Uh, developing schools. So that they are using all kinds of digital media flexibly. 
they are multitasking. Like many of you are tweeting right now or, or doing different things. But that's much more difficult for, for the next generation. Like this kind of setting that I'm talking and you are listening there like in the church. That would be probably for them very weird knowledge practice. Uh, what we call intellectual ICT prothesis is like using all kinds of devices, um, mobile phones and reminders. And for instance, nobody remembers phone numbers anymore. They're all externalized to mobile phones. So they are like, if your mobile phone is lost, you are so lost, you're trying to, you are trying to call to your mobile phone, but you don't even remember your number, and you don't have a phone to use. So people are really, really, in, they are very upset, for instance, if the internet doesn't work. You like part of their cognitive system is off. And they are doing their Googling routine, going to Wikipedia and all these things, you know this stuff. But they are not printing, they are typically working on screen, uh, screen and they are sharing and making things instead of taking in knowledge. And they have these extended global networks. Maybe your children, your students have lots of people in South America and, and they are totally exchanging ideas with them. And they are much more in knowledge creation than we were. We were much more to listening to our teachers, but these kids are creating something all the time. So at least when they go to school, they have traditional media, they have paper and pencil, they have linear sequences of things, and it's, everything is supposed to happen within your head. You don't have any devices to outsource your thinking. It's very limited textbook. It's very external performance. It's within the classroom community. The theme of this conference is digital community. So it's very much not what happens in the school, but also informal outside school and how you bring it in the classroom. I have some exa examples of this. And what we call bulimic learning. You say that, okay, your teachers, your students would know 85%. They take in all this knowledge and then they cook it to their examination paper and then they forget about it and it's very much meaningless knowledge. That's what they call bulimic learning, it's very typical in universities. So, uh, <laughs> brain research is also interesting, I'm not going into that very much, I just couldn't help showing this one picture. Professor Alma was part of our project, he's looking at what happens when people are multitasking, when they're, for instance, listening to music and doing homework at the same time, what do they learn? And then what happens, what parts of the brain activate when you're doing two things simultaneously? It's a very different process when you're doing one thing, uh, listening and, and, uh, and reading, for instance, simultaneously. But that's an interesting question, and I, after five years we know very much about this. There is not very much knowledge at the moment about developing brain and what happens to this digital areas are constantly multitasking, doing several things at the same time and hopping from, they call it grasshopper's mind, hopping from, from one thing to another, and so constant interruptions and so on. Okay, so next thing is the physical space. If you think about this physical space where we are, this is typical lecture hall setting which means that I'm here on the stage and I, I stay awake, but this is putting me to active role, it's putting you asleep, it's putting you in a passive role. And this kind of lecture halls, um, when we are now designing new universities and schools in Finland, the idea is to create new kinds of pedagogical scripts so that it becomes more interactive. And I understood something on this Spanish meeting, I, I recognize the word, a, a social constructivism or socially constructive knowledge. This kind of physical space is not very good for socially constructive knowledge. Of course, what you are doing here is, is tweeting and, and socially constructing interpretations, but we are really not interacting here right now. So, uh, I was listening to this Khan Academy last night, and uh, this is very new for our teachers, this idea of flipped classrooms or inverted classrooms. What is this? Like the idea is, is flipping the classroom.
classroom I was upside down. So that it used to be so that I'm delivering knowledge here and then you go home and you elaborate on it. But, but putting it upside down means that the valuable time we are spending at school together with children, we are not using that time for delivering knowledge, school feeding knowledge, but elaborating and talking. And good teachers are already doing this. They are not reading out how books there uh, in front of the class, uh, but they are rather expecting that the kids are watching videos or doing exercises or assignments and going outside school and bringing notes there and then they are sharing it and talking. So the idea would be to do the knowledge acquisition in an engaging way and then create knowledge together on the basis of that in the classroom. There is so much global wisdom easily accessible so that the teacher would focus on, on her basic task which is helping student learning. So, um, some people even think about kind of Copernican revolution, putting things upside down. Instead of uh, my speech here is the students' ideas and, and their products that are in the center, and also instead of putting technology in the center, putting what Kai Hakkarainen and my friend calls uh, knowledge practice approach in the center, that technology only helps learning if we change our social practices and social interaction, uh, actions. And this is actually the most boring part of my lecture that I've had now, is this theoretical idea, but I guess when you're listening to this, you are thinking about your own practices and everything you've been hearing in this conference. I'm just trying to put it in the classroom perspective. So, um, this is very visual. I'm going to show you some pictures from our North Finland. This is like 800 kilometers north of Helsinki. I think this is the most innovative uh, elementary school I've ever seen. I don't know what it looks like here. Too bad I haven't visited schools in San Sebastian. But I went there in last December, just before Christmas, and, and here are very flexible you can change the setting and furniture all the time. And they were doing Christmas cards. So they had glue on the table. And what they were actually doing, this is the, the basis of the school. Um, classroom of the future. I can hardly see any classroom here because what they do, they start the lesson here, do the assignments, and then they go to different places, great knowledge. These are very popular, these little rooms where they go. Um, in small groups to, to create knowledge. So, um, and they have a boat here, so they can play there. I have some pictures of that, but this is the basic setting of this elementary school. It, it looks very different from our time. And, um, and this is, I wanted to show this picture because I always tell teachers it's not about technology, it's also working with your hands. This is what children are creating. They are also doing things with iPads and animations and all kinds of things, but they are also doing, doing, still doing these things. And this is the boat. And, and I've been accused in Finland that I'm going to change all the schools into uh, playgrounds or, or amusement parks, <laughs> because I want schools to be engaged in learning environments. But what is interesting, the kids are not here, they could be there, taking it easy, but they are obviously there, focusing on something interesting. So they are very keen on something, and that's basically the essence of learning. Then I went to library, I saw these teddy bears there, they were going to theater and they were doing drama with this. These are actor students, uh, so they were reading this book, and then they were playing it with these teddy bears, and then they were going to theater to see the actual play. <laughs> so this is typical drama thing. And this is interesting because, um, you know, the technical teacher who was responsible for technical work, he had constructed this device so that all their iPads and mobile phones were charging while they were doing this handicraft. <laughs> so, in order to not to have glue on them. I love, love this device. They are so creative. In Finland we have so little money actually in the schools 
sector that we have to be very creative to do things. And this is compu computer class. I was especially fond of this chair. This is teachers. He's chilling out there and kids are, kids are working. The problem is that I'm working with teacher education. Uh, I'm training future teachers. And if this is what Finnish school is going to look like. Uh, and if, if we are training our teacher students in these kinds of lecture halls, uh, for instance, I have 450 students in my class, subject matter teachers. I have 120 elementary school teachers, 100 kindergarten teachers. If they are to be studying in this kind of setting where we are now, how could they then learn how to use these environments? Of course, in training, but, but we figured out that we have to develop university practices as well. So what we are thinking is future teacher education in Finland. I think that's strategically very important. So we had this World Design Capital Year, and we had uh, developed um, this new passion to learn concept. So we are thinking it's, I mean, in the end, if I have time, I will talk a bit about emotions and motivation. But our idea is that we have to adapt new ways of collective learning, knowledge creation, but also developing engagement and passion to learn. That's actually my research topic right now. So what we had, uh, a new knowledge practice, because this is what we had, in May 2012, a library. Nobody was reading these articles because you can have them online. So we got this space and during one summer we recreated it to a future learning space for teachers. And uh, technologies, I could talk about technologies for a long time, but, but usually we think that that's a misconception.